What's going on guys? Welcome back. Moving on to the next section, we're now going to talk about cost volume profit analysis, sometimes referred to in its short form as CVP analysis. And over the next few videos, I'm going to be doing a bunch of examples, but in this video, I'm just going to be doing a general overview and introducing some definitions that you're going to run into in this section. So let's introduce an example here. Let's say a company sells 10,000 units of a product at $10 each. Variable costs are $4 per unit and fixed costs are 30,000. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this scenario and I'm gonna make an income statement from it. So first thing we start off with is the revenue or the sales, either or works. So 10,000 times $10, which is 100,000. Now this income statement that I'm about to make is gonna be a little bit different than the one you're used to. So after revenue usually comes cost of goods sold, but in this case, I'm gonna put variable costs. So the variable costs are $4 per unit, and if you sell 10,000 units, multiply those, you'd end up getting 40,000 for the variable costs. And then when you subtract these two figures, you're gonna get something called the contribution margin right so regular income statement it's like revenue cost of goods sold and then gross profit and in this case we got variable costs and contribution margin instead so revenue or sales minus variable costs equals contribution margin you're going to see that term come up a lot in this section and then once you have your contribution margin, you could take away, let me actually put brackets here for stuff we're taking away. So we can uh, take away our fixed costs. Our fixed costs are 30,000. So this is gonna be 30,000 here. And we're gonna end up with a profit, hopefully. And in this case, it's 30,000. I'll put this in brackets as well. All right now, this here, this type of income statement, it's called a contribution margin income statement. And sometimes this profit here, you'll see, depending on the textbook and uh, the course you're doing, you may see this uh, as net income. Sometimes you may see it as operating income. I'm just gonna keep it more general and just call it profit, but make sure you just adjust this to whatever your textbook is using. Now, lots of times you'll see the contribution income statement on a per unit basis. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna take the stuff that's shown as per unit. So what depends on the number of units? Well, the revenue, that's $10 per unit, and then you have the variable cost per unit, which is $4, and so you would get a contribution margin of $6 per unit. And then the fixed cost, it doesn't depend on the number of units, so you usually won't see this here being referred to on a per unit basis, but you can take the average fixed cost if you do want per unit, you could just take the 30,000 divided by the 10,000, but usually, if you're showing a contribution margin income statement on a per unit basis, you're just showing the revenue variable cost and the contribution margin. And then this $6 here, this is sometimes referred to, let me actually write it uh, over here. Sometimes it's referred to as the unit contribution margin, right? So the contribution margin per unit, you may see that definition come up as well. And a lot of times stuff is referred to in percentages as well, these items here on this uh, income statement. So they're always percentages of sales. So the sales here, if we represent that to be 100%, then what are the variable costs? Notice the variable costs are always gonna be 40% of sales because if you're selling something at $10 each and variable costs are $4 per unit, then four of 10, it's always 40%. And so the contribution 
margin percentage is 60%. And this here, this 60%, sometimes referred to as the contribution margin ratio. All right, and you can get that either by taking the unit contribution and dividing it by the unit price, so six over 10, or you could take the total contribution margin, 60,000, divided by the total sales, 100,000. Each will give you 60%. And sometimes you'll see these referred to as decimals. You're gonna see when we're doing certain algebra and future examples. So if we convert this all to decimals, 100 would be like one. Um, 40% would be 0 0.4, and then 60% uh, would be 0 0.6. Notice how 1 minus 0.4 equals 0.6. And this 40% here, or this 0.4, I'll write it over here, this is sometimes referred to as the variable cost ratio. All right, and so if you think about it, if we show this in, or let's just do 100%. Basically, 100% minus the variable cost ratio. That's always going to give us the contribution margin ratio. Or if we show this in decimals, 1 minus the variable cost ratio in decimals equals the contribution margin ratio in decimals. Now, so far we've kept things pretty general. So profit equals revenue minus variable cost minus fixed cost. But what if we start getting more specific? What if we start looking at more specific types of companies? So for example, let's say we look at a manufacturing company. Well, if you remember from previous sections, manufacturing companies, they basically have two types of costs. They have product costs or manufacturing costs, and then they have period costs or non-manufacturing costs. And then the product costs are further broken down into three pieces, direct material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead. So now let's try to take the specific manufacturing type of costs and put them in these categories. So which of these is going to be variable costs, which of them are going to be fixed costs. Let's go through them one by one. So direct material, notice that that definitely is going to be a variable cost because it depends on the units that you're producing. So for example, if you're painting a car, right, the more cars that you produce, the more direct material you're going to use. So that's definitely a variable cost. Same thing with direct labor. The more units you produce, the more labor that you're going to be using, right? It's direct labor. It's traceable to the product. <clears throat> so direct labor is a variable cost as well. Now, manufacturing overhead, we can actually split this up into two types. It could be variable manufacturing overhead or fixed manufacturing overhead. So for example, variable might be if you have like a factory supervisor and he can supervise the factory up to a certain amount of output, but then as your output starts getting higher and higher and higher, it's kind of like step up costs. You have to start hiring more factory supervisors. So a factory supervisor, it's not direct labor because it's not traceable to the product, to the single product, but it's still part of manufacturing overhead, but it's sort of like a variable manufacturing overhead because as the output goes up, then you're going to have to incur more expenses, more costs under manufacturing overhead. So you can have variable manufacturing overhead or fixed manufacturing overhead. That could be like, um, <clears throat> for example, the building the factory building, the depreciation on it, right? That would be a fixed manufacturing overhead. And then period costs, they can be split up into variable and fixed period costs as well. A good example of that is selling. So a sales team, the more 
output you are producing, hopefully the more you're selling, and so the larger of a sales team you're gonna have to keep hiring, right? And that's part of period costs. Remember, general selling and admin type of expenses, that goes under period costs, and that's variable. A fixed period cost would be like the depreciation on the headquarters building. No matter how high the output is, the headquarters building is still gonna be the same, the depreciation on it is still gonna be the same. So the period cost can also be split up into variable and fixed. So if we take all those costs and group them under variable costs and fixed costs, variable costs, direct material, plus direct labor, plus variable manufacturing overhead, plus variable period costs, and then fixed costs would be fixed manufacturing overhead plus fixed period costs. Now, in questions, you may not see period costs come up. They may mention something like fixed general and selling expenses or uh, fixed and min expenses, but remember general selling and min, those go all under period costs. So this could be like fixed selling costs and this could be like variable selling costs. So just be aware of that. I just kept it as a general category of period costs there.